everybody. My name is Lisa Skelton. I'm from Ericsson. I work in the area of content delivery. Um, and the video that you just saw was, uh, in relate, it's related to our, our campaign that we have at Ericsson called Network Society. And that's the vision that we have for the year 2020 where everything that benefits from a, connect, from a connection will be connected. That's what we believe at Ericsson, and um, that's something that we use, um, this uh, vision and all of the, the stats that go along with it from, from our uh, many areas of, of research uh, in order to shape uh, how we uh, put together our solutions and our services for uh, all of our customers. Thank you so much for joining today. Uh, today we'll be talking a little bit about uh, content delivery, your business in the year 2020. Uh, some of you might be asking, well, Erickson, you know, uh, uh, content delivery, uh, this, is, this is something kind of new. Um, and it, it is. Uh, about a year and a half ago, we've uh, launched a couple of uh, brand new solutions in the area of content delivery. One solution is uh, around LTE broadcast. And since then, you know, we've really been uh, a front runner in that uh, area of solution, uh, sweeping probably every um, major award that there's been in that area. And we also have a solution called Media Delivery Network. And that solution is all about uh, building a single platform for operators to use to manage the, all of the content delivery over their network, regardless of network or access type and regardless of content type. Uh, so we're quite involved in that area, and we're quite involved in the area of TV and media in general. Uh, just a, a quick uh, highlight, uh, in case anyone isn't familiar with Ericsson in this space, uh, we have actually have um, given the number of large acquisitions that we have in the area of TV and media. We have a 20-year track record in pioneering different TV and video innovations. We're first in market share for IPTV, uh, satellite uh, contribution and distribution, and also multi-platform content management and broadcast services. Uh, we have uh, over 2,000 customers in the area of TV and media in more than 100 countries worldwide. There's over 300 channels that we manage the en entire broadcast operations of and 40% of all of the world's uh, global, uh, pay TV um, on-demand content flows through Ericsson Solutions. And then most recently, we've, we've been able to help one of our customers launch the world's largest operator, CD, C, CDN, and that was um, via this media delivery solution that I talked about earlier. And we also have uh, four Emmys um, in uh, technical Emmys for, for things that we've done in the area of TV. So what I want to talk w with you about a little bit today is some of our vision and some of the um, <coughs> research and statistics that we have in the area, especially uh, around content delivery. And so where do we gather these insights from? Ericsson has over uh, 20,000 R&D specialists worldwide. Uh, we do a mobility report. Uh, the report comes out um, about twice a year, um, and we do in-depth data traffic reports. We have a consumer lab study, and we do different flavors of the consumer lab. We do one that's specific to TV and media, uh, but our consumer labs interview um, over uh, 100,000 people worldwide in over 40 countries each year. Uh, we also have a network society lab, and this is um, uh, researchers uh, with ITC, ICT uh, driven uh, transformation. And we have a business lab, and amongst other things, um, we study collaboration across industries um, regarding things like machine to machine. And then uh, putting some of these things together, we have Media Vision 2020, which was launched a little bit earlier this year. And all of these things can be found um, on ericsson.com, and I'll, I'll give you links at the very end of the presentation, where you can go and you can, like, you can look at some of the uh, traffic analysis that we have and also um, some of the different vision and insights. So to kick things off, what are the, the, key, the key things that are important for this particular space? Number one, uh, 
driver that we have in the area of content delivery at Ericsson is the shift towards mobility. I think this is a really, really big deal. Um, as you can see, the red line on this graph is overall mobile subscriptions. Um, the purple line represents overall broadband subscriptions. And that middle line, that yellow dotted one, represents the growth in broadband subscriptions. And that's the one that we think is really, really interesting. So we're looking at between um, just now and to, you know, today and 2019, we're looking at four times growth in that space. We also know that it's not just uh, so the subscriptions that'll grow. What will grow even faster is the actual amount of data traffic uh, in this space. So just in mobile alone, we see a 10 times growth in the area of uh, data traffic between now and 2019. Uh, one of the things that I took uh, uh, earlier this week from our, uh, our, our traffic uh, analysis that you can, you can do yourself online um, on the ericsson.com page uh, was looking specifically at Western Europe. And here what I was trying to look at was comparing the growth in subscriptions, in mobile subscriptions, versus the uh, growth in the actual traffic that will take place. So the dark line actually represents um, the new subscriptions, which will be around an 8% growth uh, between now and 2019. Uh, and then we have 636% growth in the actual amount of traffic used. So our question is, where does that money come from? How do you monetize that additional <coughs> flow of traffic when we've already reached a, kind of a, a level of penetration with smartphone device subscriptions? So number two, um, as far as a, a, a key uh, vision, a key, key uh, thought to keep in mind, is video. Uh, we all know that this is a big, big deal. Uh, this is no surprise to any one of you. So um, this is just a given that I wanted to make sure was included. Uh, we know that uh, between now and 2019, we'll, we'll see uh, that traffic will become over 50% of even mobile traffic. But number three is, is, the real, um, is the real one to keep in mind. Uh, we need to start thinking about, you know, when we're talking about mobile traffic, we need to think about even beyond the smartphone. So when I was talking about earlier in the presentation our idea of the network society and how everything that benefits from a connection will be connected, this means, um, you know, we've been spending the last, you know, uh, 100 years connected, connecting places, and then uh, shorter in time we've been connecting people, and then now we're actually just connecting things. And um, we at Ericsson uh, project that by the year 2020 we'll have 50 billion connected things in the world. And one important thing to note is that of these 50 billion, 15 billion will be video enabled, at least that many. So this is kind of a big deal. Um, along that same lines, we need to think about um, what type of services we're looking at if we're thinking beyond smartphones. So here's a chart where we look at different, uh, different industries. We look at things like automotive, utilities, transport, media. And we have the same sorts of uh, values that are over, uh, over on the uh, left side. Uh, throughput, latency, quality of experience, volumes, coverage, all of these are, in each of these uh, industries, we're looking at the same things, just at different levels of value. So what we'll probably be seeing is a large rethinking of roles in the area of, of so, so, uh, service providers and operators. Uh, we'll see kind of a transition from um, basic connectivity to actually focus on system and platforms, and then ultimately those services and applications that, that reside on those platforms. So we'll see, uh, we'll see uh, players grow from you know, network developers to service enablers to service creators. And we'll see you know, 
our customers at Ericsson, operators and, and service providers worldwide, will see people uh, taking different places in this whole chain. So with the operator transformation, we have to look at these different spaces and see what makes sense. Where, you know, where is this money coming from? You know, how are we going to tackle uh, the transformation of the whole media value chain and all of the different uh, devices and things that will be connected? And <clears throat> this was a quote that I thought was really a nice one. And it says, why shouldn't the car be connected? It's the ultimate mobile device. And this was a, a quote from the Ford company. But um, we have customers that are actually really embracing this. And I wanted to highlight a few of those examples that we think will become trends between now and 2020. So one of our um, uh, very innovative customers, AT&T, has launched the AT&T Drive, AT Drive Studio. And they're using Ericsson's connected vehicle cloud in order to, uh, to do this. And they also have a number of other partners that are put into play to actually create this entire studio uh, related to the connected car and um, the automotive industry. One of the other all new business models that we've been thinking about is uh, toll free data. So this is an example of a key type of uh, a business model that can be put in place that really uh, changes the whole flow of monetization, but really makes use of things that we already have uh, in play. So what happens in a toll-free data scenario is that operators can partner with different content providers, and they create a promotional offer, and then on-the-go users see this offer, and then a uh, number of things happen behind the scenes in order to actually identify you know, this URL and be able to, uh, to be able to charge it appropriately. And then the on-the-go user enjoys that content uh, free of charge. Now, why, why would we want to do this? Well, there's a lot of rich media being created currently that actually is not consumed I mean, it's not getting the eyeballs that, that, that are necessary um, because people are very worried about where their data caps are on mobile devices. They're thinking, should I be watching this movie trailer? I don't know. Um, so it's very advantageous for content providers to be able to have this avenue to be able to offer these promotions to end users and for them to be able to consume them. So AT&T has uh, launched sponsored data at the beginning of the year, and they're the first operator to launch any sort of toll-free data service. And they have uh, many partners already, and uh, I think this is a really great example of the type of business model trends that we'll be seeing in the future. Um, there's all sorts of scenarios in which case, in, in, how this might work. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you may see some sort of digital signage when you're out and about using uh, near field communication. You may tap your phone against that, and suddenly you'll be browsing um, you know, Google Maps directions to your, lo you know, your closest McDonald's or viewing a movie trailer that you got off of a movie poster. Um, again, free of charge to you as the end user. Another really great um, use case here would be uh, bring your own device to work. So enterprises could actually be allowing um, their employees to access different URLs and different applications free of charge to them when they bring their devices to work. Um, one of the um, uh, partners that AT&T has is a healthcare company. So this works just the exact same way any toll-free data or toll-free um, phone number would work when you're accessing uh, different services that you might have, whether it's like an HP help desk or your healthcare provider. Um, there, that's another example of how this might be used. So collaboration, um, that's one of the morals of the story. Uh, we see tighter and tighter collaboration between the content providers and the service providers. Um, we think that this is a great way to see increased monetization and also to increase the quality of experience that the end user ultimately gets. So sponsored data and AT&T Drive 
are great examples of this. Um, we think we'll see a lot more announcements like what we saw with Netflix cutting deals with Comcast. Um, we'll see tighter connection between content providers and service providers. Um, and we'll see more things like the announcement Ericsson made earlier this year about a plug-in media, media ecosystem. What this is, is this is um, Ericsson taking uh, the solution that we have uh, for operators to have uh, their own operator CDN and building out ready-made integration with all sorts of different uh, global CDN providers and in the future other types of partners, whether it be browsers, advertisers, so that really enabling all sorts of different business models uh, through the operator's network. There are several types of uh, different delivery techniques that we think we'll see as well. So these are just a few uh, examples of, of things we might see. So the first one is greater user control. So imagine um, the ability to have uh, an overlay or menu on the screen that gives you um, the ability to purchase upgrades on the fly, um, change change your, your plan on the fly, and being able to do things that mitigate your, your cost as a user, whether it's something like a toll-free data scenario or whether it's adding downloads to a smart queue when you're going to download off at peak times. It's giving the user a little bit more control, giving them a little bit more flexibility, and giving them the opportunity to use the operator's network a little bit more. Um, the second thing that you see here is network awareness. So this one is about being able to have greater um, uh, uh, intelligence and basically a more intuitive network. So greater congestion uh, detection. So we're looking for things, uh, more granular indicators than we have today. So today, basically the way that congestion is typically detected is on packet loss alone. But we're looking at things like combining that uh, that metrics with things like round trip time and bit rate and other things to have a much more uh, complete set of metrics around congestion. And then applying that together with things like um, uh, information around user plan, policy, uh, profile, to just really have a much more, uh, as I was saying, um, a much more intuitive content delivery. And then you'll see things like um, service layer counting or the ability to actually detect how many uh, users are uh, tuning into the same content within a certain cell and being able to automatically switch from a unicast to a multicast or broadcast scenario. Um, we'll see more and more of that happening uh, based on thresholds and being able to deliver things in a much more efficient and uh, intelligent way. So um, in summary, we went through a lot of stats here, but um, in the year 2020, we're going to have 9 billion people on the planet. We'll have 1 billion fixed broadband subscriptions. Uh, we'll have 8 billion mobile broadband su subscriptions. 90% of the world will be covered by mobile broadband. Mobile traffic will grow uh, at least 10% or sorry, at least 10 times, uh, there'll be 50 billion connective devices on the planet. And of those, 15 billion will be video connected devices or video enabled devices. We know that the media value chain will continue to evolve at a very rapid pace. Collaboration will be key. That will be ultimate driver of success. And uh, we know that agile networks will be the ones that thrive. So these are some of the things that we uh, covered today. And these were all the links to all of the different um, reports and studies that Erickson has done that have been um, referenced in this presentation. I'll give you guys some time to, uh, to, to note that down. I think this will also be available later uh, after this conference. And um, I'm used to typically delivering a presentation in about 20 minutes, so I'm sure we have a little bit of time to spare here. So if you guys have any questions, I'm happy to answer those. Questions? 
how do you think the relationship between content owners and network owners will change? Which way do you think the money's going to go from content to network or network to content? <laughs> well, um, it, both. Um, but we're going to see a lot more money flowing between the content provider and the network uh, than ever before. So the operator's typical you know, bread and butter has been mostly uh, based on subscriptions and, and the end user. But with things like toll-free data um, and other scenarios where we can actually um, improve the content provider's uh, ultimate quality of, of delivery of their content to the end user um, and to be able to do some things that only an operator can do uh, uh, and the way that they're connected to the end user, uh, I, I think we'll have a lot more uh, bu business models that open up that are where the money flows, you know, upstream. Yeah, related to that, how do, you, how do you sort of manage the risk for the content provider uh, if they're paying Manage the risk. How? Well, like, I mean, you know, how do you put a, a cap on the amount of money that they would have to spend? Oh, okay. Um, well, I think that would be something that you determine on a, a, con a contract basis uh, when you establish that promotion, when the content provider and the operator uh, establish that promotion. You, you would have to act ultimately um, consider that. What, um, what we're suggesting is possible is the technology behind that, obviously, um, something Ericsson has called multi-service proxy, which is able to actually detect um, these different URLs and be able to help reverse bill them. Um, so we want to make sure that that type of business model or that ability um, is exposed. But you're absolutely right. That would have to be something that would be built into a contract between the operator and the broadcaster. And so then technologically, you know, when you reached a cap or an agreed upon amount, there would have to be some kind of instant yeah. uh, uh, system-wide notice that says this promotion no longer works. Yeah, and that that is already possible, um, but you know the way that you determine that cap would be based on the content provider themselves. Any other questions? Do you have any predictions on the decline or otherwise of linear TV? Because this is all about the, the device you watch it on. It yeah. Whether it's traditional linear streaming or on demand. Absolutely. So I really uh, would urge you to go to our new uh, Media Vision 2020. Uh, study that's on Ericsson.com because we have a lot of stuff that's focused on the actual TV experience. Uh, one of the things that I can talk about is that we see that um, today there's much more linear programming that's watched. Uh, by the year 2020, we think that it's going to be at least a 50-50 split between linear content and on-demand content, whether that is a DVR-based uh, on demand or on demand through the pay TV service provider or on demand in other scenarios. Um, we see that that being a true 50 50 split by the year 2020. Okay, so not, <coughs> not complete evaporation. No. No. One of the cool things that we see in these consumer lab studies that we do uh, frequently is that. Um, while you know we do see, of course, a rise in on-demand content and a gradual decrease in, in linear, people are just ultimately watching more. <laughs> so that decrease isn't happening as 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 rapidly as you might expect. It's not a, it's not like a one for one trade-off. Um, there's a question about the uh, so when it will be uh, in general. Yes, yeah, so, so Ericsson, our solution for LTE broadcast is generally available. We have a lot of trials in place currently, um, and I don't have, I don't have, we have actually publicly announced some of these trials, but I don't have any um, uh, actual deployments, you know, true deployments to um, speak about publicly right now. So it's now generally. Do you think data caps will definitely still be with us in 2020? Any chance of 
lessening of their use? Uh, that's a hard one to determine. I mean, I think that we're all, the reason that we look at so many of these different new business models from the content delivery standpoint is because that rise is so um, apparent, that rise in the amount of traffic that we're all going to consume. Um, the rise in revenue following that isn't so apparent. So we're looking for ways that we can, you know, uh, basically uh, enable a, an operator to really, uh, really monetize their network. So, um, you know, one of the ways to do that is a more tiered plan. Um, and putting things like data caps in place. Having an all-you-can-eat or an unlimited plan is, you know, is, it's a little bit harder for them to capture that. So it's, it's hard to say what will happen. Um, I think a lot of these other business models need to be put in place in order us, for us to keep the sort of um, unlimited all-you-can-eat data plans. Um, if those aren't put into place, then you'll see, I think, more and more tiered plans. Yeah. <laughs> there's what's funny is there's all sorts of new standards popping up. Um, will any one of those be like an ultimate solution to the problem? Probably not. Um, when it comes to content and um, and you know an ownership of that, of course, this is a very sensitive topic. Everyone wants to own their different spaces, whether they own the experience or they own the content itself. Um, it's it's We've been, you know, pushing towards these type of standards for, for years now, and are, will we ultimately see that? I don't know. What we've been doing on the Ericsson side is building very flexible, open solutions so that we can mitigate, you know, the cost of having these kind of, uh, you know, um, multiple moving parts. So this particular media delivery solution, media delivery network that we have in place is about bringing together all those different things that are typically in silos. So if it's managed content versus unmanaged content, whether it's mobile versus fixed, putting that on a single platform. And then the other big um, you know, rule that we, we consider is that we, we think that um, you know, all of the relationships are important. In fact, you're gonna wanna have even more relationships in the future. So even if you would have your own operator CDN, you would still want to have connections with probably multiple global CDNs. So that's what we strive for. Uh, at least in the near term. Um, I have a question. Um, Telcos used to be focused on consumer primary uh, subscriptions, um, with the shift of having multiple relationships, even more and more on the business side, you know, cloud providers, etc. Um, uh, how fast will Telcos move in that direction? Because I find it difficult. I see. <laughs> well, they should move as fast as possible, but um, if, if we look at kind of a, a track record of this, I think it will be a slow transition. I don't, I don't think that's probably, yeah, I don't think it's going to be that fast. Anything else? All right, well, thank you very, very much for joining today.